Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Star Rail Theory and Speculation video. Today, I want to speculate on alternate paths that playable characters in the game could get. We recently got a new form from March 7th in version 2.4, and I think there is potential for a lot more of these in the future. Now, this video does contain spoilers for the quests listed on screen now, so if you haven't done those, you have been warned. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. Currently, the only characters that have multiple playable paths all belong to the Astral Express crew. The Trailblazer can follow the Destruction, the Preservation, and the Harmony, Don Hung can follow the Hunt and the Destruction, and March 7th can follow the Preservation and the Hunt. The Trailblazer will definitely get more playable paths in the future, as they are the main character of this game. If I had to guess, we'll probably get a new path for the Trailblazer once every year or so. Eventually, we'll likely have each of the playable paths available to the Trailblazer. I could also see March 7th getting the occasional new path here and there. She currently has the most unique outfits in the game, including an outfit that was shown once during Jolted Awake from a Winter Dream, then never again. As much as I love this outfit and want it to be playable, we probably wouldn't get a new path or element with it. March Ward on a trip to Urillo 6, a planet that follows the preservation, and it still has themes that match the ice elements. We could get it as an alternative outfit, but it would still likely fit with her first kit. Other than that outfit, I could definitely see us getting more training arcs with March in the future that lead to even more new kits. Of course, Don Hung could also get a new kit at some point in the future. At the moment, no Astral Express character uses the Path of Abundance in any of their kits. I think Don Hung could get a new kit that uses this path, perhaps by learning healing from his fellow Videodera, Bailu and Lingxia. Himiko and Welt could also get new kits, but obtaining them would be different compared to how we obtained March's new kit. Since they are both 5 stars, these new kits would likely be obtained via Wishing, similar to Imbibitor Lune. Instead of being separate characters, they could use the same path switching system that March and the Trailblazer use. Perhaps they could even introduce a new permanent banner for these alternate kits. You could choose the alternate kit 5 star that you want to go for, and you'd be guaranteed to get it, similar to the Bane Boo channel in Zenless. For limited 5 star characters, there could be an option to select which path of theirs you want to get on their banner. For example, if Kafka were to get a new kit, then Kafka's banner would feature both of her kits. You would then pick which kit you want to get, and it would have an increased chance of appearing. Out of the two kits, you would only be able to get the one you selected, but you could switch your choice at any time. As for new kits for Welt and Himiko, I have a few ideas. For Welt, he could unleash his full power as a Hersher. This new kit would focus more on attack instead of debuffing, making his path either destruction or erudition. Since his attacks would likely still focus around black holes, his element could be quantum. For Himiko, I could see us getting a harmony kit for her. She acts sort of like a mother to the Astral Express crew, and this new kit would help her encourage the other members. Additionally, it could work well with a new Welt kit. Currently, Welt is a support and Himiko is an attacker, so it would be pretty cool to see their roles get swapped. Moving on though, I now want to talk about the Stellaron Hunters, who will definitely play a major role throughout Star Rail's story. In their many appearances in the future, we could get new kits for them. I came up with an idea for each of them to get a new kit, so I'll go over them in their initial release order. For Silverwolf, we could get a version of her that focuses more on defense instead of debuffing. Instead of hacking others, she would use her abilities to stop us from being attacked. In this kit, her path would be the preservation, while her element would be fire, referencing the idea of a computer's firewall. Her shields could also apply burn to the enemies that attack her, showing hints of her original kit. For Blade, we could get a version of him that references his immortality. The cause of Blade's immortality was the flesh of an emanator of the Abundance, so I could see us getting an Abundance kit for him. With this new kit, he could heal allies at the cost of his own HP. He could also heal himself through his ultimate or by healing others enough times. For Kafka, we could get a version of her that unleashes her more destructive and chaotic side. Of course, this new kit would make use of the destruction. 
Instead of focusing on debuffing her enemies, this Kafka would go all out on the attack. This could be how she acts on missions where she doesn't need to worry about the outcome, allowing her to just cut loose. For Firefly, we could get a version of her that ties back to the animated trailer that shows the Iron Cavalry fight against the Swarm. In that trailer, a giant tree grew where she was standing, which many believe was due to the power of the Abundance. Perhaps after we help Firefly cure her illness, we could get a version of her that uses the Abundance. Instead of using Sam in combat, it would just be her fighting and providing healing. On a return trip to Urillo 6, we could see some characters get new paths and kits. In the time since the Urillo 6 Trailblaze missions, they could have learned some new combat abilities that would allow us to get new kits for them. Starting with Branya and Zila, they could have taught each other their respective fighting styles. Similar to Himiko and Welts, they could end up switching their roles on the battlefield. Branya would now be an attacker, while Sila would now be a support. As for the story behind this, the two of them may be getting a bit frustrated working with each other. In order to work together better, they may want to step into each other's shoes and see what it's like. We could help them adjust to their new roles in a new story, where Branya would lead Wildfire while Sila would act as the Supreme Guardian. They would both learn a lot in this story, allowing them to come up with better plans for running Bellabog and ensuring a bright future for the whole of Urillo 6. Other characters that we've met previously could also grow up a bit and learn better ways to fight. To start, Clara could learn to fight by herself to help protect her friends. We could get a preservation version of her that protects everyone, or even an abundance version of her that gives supplies to her teammates. Another character who could learn a new fighting style would be Hook. She could learn how to rein in her power and focus it to launch a powerful attack on a single enemy. Of course, this new kit would follow the hunt. She would be able to use more precise attacks instead of rolling all across the battlefield to deal damage. Similar to Urillo 6, we could see more characters get new paths on a return to the Zienjo. We could get new training missions like we got for March, or unique stories for each of these characters. To start off, I want to talk about Ting Yun. In my recent video speculating on version 2.5, I talked about the potential for Ting Yun to be revived by Ron May. If you want to hear my thoughts about that plot, I recommend checking out that video. If this does end up happening, we could definitely get a new form and kit for Ting Yun. I think Abundance could fit, as it would reflect her resurrection. Preservation could also fit, reflecting her will to return back to life. Next up, we could see Qingxia get a new kit that allows her to take the initiative. During a future story, she may have to step up in the Divination Commission to prevent things from going south. During a certain crisis, Fu Xuan could be off-world dealing with some other matters, leaving it to Tingchua to get things back to normal. She could try mirroring Fu Xuan to get this done, allowing us to get a preservation kit for her. Since she probably doesn't want to do all this work though, Nihility could fit as well. Finally, I could see Bailu getting a new form that reflects her progress as the new High Elder of the Luafu Vidyatara. She could have attacks that mirror Imbiber Lune in some way, with her new path being destruction, hunt, or even erudition. This could be done in a story where Don Hung also gets a new form. Perhaps they would help each other out in learning new skills, with Don Hung learning healing and Bailu training to be the High Elder. Of course, there are many other characters in the Star Rail universe. Instead of giving each faction or planet a separate section, I decided to group the rest of my ideas together in this final section. First up, I could see Ron May getting a new form that reflects her ambition to become an Eon. This new form could follow the Abundance, as her research is mainly focused around life itself. She could start researching other aspects of life including healing, which would allow us to have this new kid. This would also give her better understanding of life as a whole, which would further her grand pursuit. Next, Sparkle has almost limitless potential for getting a new kid. As a shapeshifter and a masked fool, she could take on any form she wanted to. She could follow other paths to see what they're like, allowing her to have more kits. In the future, we could see Sparkle on other planets using these kits. Finally, I could see Robin getting a new form. After the events on Penicone, she decided that she wanted to take a vacation and see the cosmos. This vacation could lead her to discovering some new styles of music that she could use in combat. Perhaps we could get an erudition Robin that shares this new music with all the enemies at once. 
Anyways, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on alternate paths for existing characters. There is so much potential for alternate character kits, and I only went over a few of my ideas in this video. If you want more of my thoughts about Star Rail though, I recommend my videos on Emphorius and my version 2.5 speculations. I would love to hear what ideas you all have for alternate character kits in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.